the name of Jesus. Amen. Much of what you hear and read about in the Old Testament no longer applies. We heard this morning a portion of the account of the institution of the annual Day of Atonement for the people of Israel, a day in which bulls and rams were slain as sacrifices, and one of the two goats that was offered up to God was released alive into the wilderness, bearing the sins of the people away from the camp, signifying and carrying their sins away from them. They had to do these things. Aaron and all of the high priests after him had to perform these rituals every year and other rituals all throughout the year in order that the sins of the people and the desecrations they had brought about just by their very presence among the holy things might be atoned for, cleansed, and forgiven. We no longer keep the Day of Atonement. All right, I just got done telling you all about how we don't have to keep the Day of Atonement and what it was about. Um, so, <laughs> glad you caught up back there. <laughs> there are no bulls and rams and goats brought forward in your church to be bloodied at the altar. We don't have to worry about sending a live goat out into the wilderness to bear away our sins. Our sins have been borne away by Christ, who is the Lamb of God, who by his sacrifice has taken away the sins of the world, as John the Baptist proclaimed. He has made atonement for our sins and for everything we do that defiles. He's obtained forgiveness for us. Forgiveness, however, must not only be gained, but also given and received. What Christ has done as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, must be applied to each one of us in the world. Martin Luther said in one of his sermons, unquestionably, Christ accomplished all, took away our sins and overcame every obstacle, enabling us to become through him lords over all things. But the treasure lies in a heap. It is not everywhere distributed and applied. If it is not distributed and applied, this great treasure of forgiveness does you no good. It does you no good. It's not that your sins haven't been forgiven. It's rather that you would not have taken advantage of or received that forgiveness of, that has already been won. So as our Lord appointed and consecrated Aaron long ago to serve him and make atonement for the people, applying to them the blood of the atonement. So now Christ Jesus, who is both sacrificed and great high priest, appoints and consecrates men to proclaim and apply the gift of forgiveness to his people now. These are your pastors. They're ordinary men. They're not that special. They are men who, like Aaron, need the forgiveness of sins by Jesus themselves as much or maybe even more than you do. But they have been hallowed by him to do this for you. They don't just serve in any way they like, but as God has decreed and commanded them to serve, distributing forgiveness and salvations in the ways he has established. And so you don't get God just any old way you like. You have to find him in the places that he has given you to find him. In the preaching of his gospel, in baptismal waters, in the absolving voice of your pastor, in the bread and in the cup. You'll find forgiveness in these things because you will find Christ in these things. His voice, the washing in his blood, his absolving, his body given to eat, his blood to drink. 
You see, Jesus is not a goat, but the lamb who was slain and yet lives. And unlike the scapegoat of the Old Testament, Christ has not been sent off to wander into the wilderness away from the camp bearing our sins, but having been slayed outside the camp to atone for them, has left our sins there in the tomb and now comes to the camp alive, bearing with him forgiveness, life, salvation. And the treasure is no longer in a heap, but is given to you so that you might believe and actually be forgiven. To him be all glory now and forever with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen.